I know y'all been doing some uh, fish experiments. Uh, I was wondering if y'all could tell us a little bit about those. Excellent question. So we can talk about the uh, experiments, research going on at ICR. Uh, I think the blind cave fish, maybe others. These guys will yeah. be able to discuss so that. So there's this really cool fish. It's called the Mexican blind tetra, Astyanax mexicanus. And it's a little bitty fish, but looks, I guess, like a minnow. But it turns out that there's a blind version of the fish, which has no pigment, so it's pink, and has no eyes. The blind version is called the cave morph, or morphotype. It has enhanced sensory inputs uh, on the lateral line. So it's got these, a, a ring of pressure sensors that goes down the sides of its body. And so it can navigate, even though they have no eyes, they see through the pressure sensors. So they, can, they don't bump into the walls of anything. They interbreed with the sighted version, which has eyes and has pigment in its skin and iridophores, which is a reflective material in its scales. So how do you go from the fish that has eyes to the blind fish? And I was taught, and I believe for a long time, that the way that this fish morphed from sighted to blind when it entered this cave was because of eons of accidents. And so this sighted fish would bump into the sides of the cave and its eyes would rot maybe. And so the next generation, which had smaller eyes, was better able to survive. And eventually through lots of time and natural selection, the darkness of the cave is doing some selecting, I thought. What we're finding in our experiments, we're testing that hypothesis to see how fast does this really happen happen. So we have sighted fish and we're putting them in a cave environment. So we're putting sighted fish in a cave environment and it turns out that it's the acidity that the fish are measuring. So they have acid-based detectors like pH detectors. They're measuring of course pressure, they're measuring light. And so what we found so far is that if you put a high light on the blind fish that have no pigment, the very little pigment, we thought maybe in multiple generations they would evolve if the evolutionary model is correct, they would evolve the ability to have more pigment and that the ones that did not have enough pigment would start to die off because they would have cancer induced from UV radiation or something like that. That was the model we've all been taught. But it turns out that within 30 days, not multiple generations, these fish develop pigment, which means they're detecting the light and they already have a ready assembly of uh, pigment option to deploy immediately within that very generation that detected the light, the UV light. So that's one aspect that we're discovering, which confirms the competing model. So the one model that I was taught was eons of nature, and the other model is divine creation so that these creatures have within them innately the ability to adapt in, within limits, certain specified limits, so that they can pioneer different environments and indeed do what the Lord commanded in Genesis 1, which is to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, even the earth's caves. And so what we're seeing, what we're testing is the ability, how fast do these adaptations occur? If it occurs fast, then it can't be slow, gradual, typical evolutionary processes that I was taught. If it occurs fast, it has to be because it's been built in from the beginning. Ooh.